right, today we're stringing an XO3 Toron Ruben Gonzalez, although I think now they no longer use the Ruben Gonzalez name. Uh, there's a couple things that make this racket unique. Number one are these weird so-called power rings down at the bottom, which are like these open grommets built into the frame. And then the O ports along the side. Um, the big open spaces that make stringing a little bit more annoying. But to start, I'm just going to string, um, it's going to be a two-piece stringing, 22 feet mains, 17 feet crosses. And to start, I'm going to take the 22 feet of mains and string it down to both lower power rings, which would be Essentially one head left and one head right. It looks like I'll need to get a nice angle on this thing if I can. There we go. So I'm going to pull this evenly through so we have about 11 feet on both sides. Since it's a two piece, it's going to be symmetrical. I don't have to worry about a short side really. And I'm going to start by clamping off on one left throat and I'm going to tension and pull on one left throat. I always start like this again just because um, because I don't want any untensioned string running through the clamp. Um, on the inside of the frame. So now this is tensioned. Oops. I guess I should um, fasten that clamp in though, huh? So let's do that again. Okay. Should have to tighten the clamp in place. All right, now we undo it. Now this is tight and we pull it again. Okay, and then we go up on the other side of this power ring thing. <clears throat> up to two head left. Full tension here. Now I can pull down here. Okay. Notice I unhooked my starting clamp as I did that so that my string didn't bend crazy. Essentially, it's two throat right, I guess. It's just on the other side of that little bar. So the string effectively hooks around the bar at the bottom and it goes up to two head right. is like the same opening that the other string just came up through except now you're hooking around a different part of it so it's hard to describe without being able to see it up close but you use the same hole but you use the other side of the hole and I 
double pull now. And I go back to working on the left hand side. Same exact thing. Don't want to work more than a couple mains ahead in, in any given direction. So since I've strung four mains on the right, I'm going to come back and go to do a few more mains on the left. And since it's all symmetrical, it's much it's a much easier pattern here than any racquetball rackets. All right. Now there's two grommets. So what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm going, or sorry, two holes in the grommet at uh, five. So I'm gonna use the top holes on the left side and the bottom holes on the right side. Um, and you can do it the other way around, but just make sure you use the consistent top and bottom on each side. I like to do tops on one side and bottoms on the other side for these double hole grommets. So five, down to the third power ring, and up. And six. Back to the other side. I'm using the bottom holes on this side. Yep, bottom holes on the right side. Same thing. Now I believe we're going to be doing a skip here. Um, where I go from six head right to eight. Just make sure. Yeah, go down to eight. You can tell by the shape of the grommets, but I just wanted to confirm before I told you. And we go to the fourth power ring. One, two, three, four. And up to the bottom hole at 10, so 10 head right, and I'll be just tying off after this guy. Eight head, sorry. So we're tying off at the previous hole. And I'll use my Parnell knot. Check my other videos or Facebook or uh, Google for details. Sorry, YouTube for details on the Parnell knot. But I always use Parnell only. And I pull it tight with my starting clamp by rocking the first half and then pulling the tail tight. And I can let the tension off and clip it. Okay, so that's that side done. And then same thing on the other side. We're going over to eight head left, last power ring. Ten head left, top hole on this side.
Parnell. All right, so then for the cross strings, I have 17 feet. I'm actually doing a hybrid string because I ran out of this string to do the crosses. So I'm using um, two different types of strings, doesn't really matter, but I have 17 feet here. And it's a 16 by 19. So when you have an odd number of crosses, you want your, your starting knot for your crosses to be on the opposite side of where your ending knot will be. Because for every even number of crosses, the knot will be on the same starting side of the frame. So if we put the knot here, one, two, the knot would be here. So if I have an odd number of crosses, which I do on this racket, um, if I want to tie off here, which I do, that means my, because this is the tie off hole, or this is the tie off hole rather. So if I want to tie off here, which is what I want to do, um, I need my crosses to start on this side of the string. So the crosses here start at five head right. I'm gonna start from this side, even though I'm gonna pull most of the string through, as you'll see. And I'm gonna weave. I guess I should shouldn't have, didn't need to do it that way. <laughs> Could have woven it backwards. But now I'll have um, since odd number, I'll start here with a knot and then I'll tie off here. That will make sense. But I want to leave enough tail here that I can come back and pull this later. So I'll clamp it. And this is where my knot's gonna go. But first I'm gonna string a few crosses ahead. Like so. Making sure, making sure I'm doing this right. Come on, this one's being tough. There we go. Okay. All right. So now over. And you do need to make sure that you've got the uh, over under different than the top cross you've already strung. So be careful that you don't match the same over and under. And for this guy, I would prefer to keep this on top. Let's see. Might be a little tricky because it's hard to get, it's hard to come in from this angle. But once this is done, this is the hardest part of stringing the crosses. There's not a lot of room at this little um, particular hole. Might actually use my pathfinder just to make coming through the top easier. So I will. Poke it in here, and now I can make sure that it comes over the top because there's a, a hole blocking that, or a string blocking that hole on the outside, and I want to make sure the cross came over the top of that because if you'll remember, um, we are going to be using now the top holes for the crosses on this particular side. Okay. 
And I'm stringing three crosses ahead, and this first few are the hardest ones just because there's holes that block, or there's strings that block some holes on the outside. So it's a little tricky to sneak by, but this is the last one of those we will have. Okay. And now I can actually pull this. And again, notice that I, uh, when I pull the crosses, I um, keep shifting as I pull so that I don't notch the names too much because otherwise you kind of melt through and, and notch. So this helps prevent that. Probably still, you know, can mark a little bit when you're pulling through, but this helps quite a bit. And I'm gonna clip the end of this off just so I have a sharper point to use for the rest of my crosses. one and we're almost home free except for the O ports which some people definitely wanted to see which I'll show you momentarily so now I'm gonna come back and counter pull the first cross not counter pull but pull it from the outside of the frame and now I'm gonna tie this off at it Six head right. Now, I don't have a lot of space here, so I think I can still squeeze a Parnell knot, but let me check. I might need to do a Wilson Pro knot here instead. Yeah, I think I will, because I don't want to go under that main twice. So instead of doing a Parnell, I'm going to do a Wilson Pro, which is a little different. It's the only time I do the Wilson Pro Knot is when I don't really have great room for a Parnell Knot. But it's still pretty secure. And tie it there. Or cut it there, rather. <clears throat> okay. Wilson Pro Knot. Again, notice I didn't use an actual starting knot here. Now, I never use what, what they call an actual starting knot. I use a Parnell Knot. 95% of the time and then a Wilson maybe 5% of the time because the only time again you can't use a Parnell is when you either don't have room for it like in this case just now or if you don't have starting clamps you might need to use um, an alternate method although I always had starting clamps so I've never done it a different way but those should be the the only times you wouldn't use Parnell. Okay. So that part is done. Now we're just stringing the crosses like normal with the exception of the O ports, which we're about to start now. And this is where I like to use the um, clothes pins. Like this style of drop-in clothes pin, which you'll see. And that's going to prevent me from needing to use the um, the brake on my table, on my stringing machine, which is kind of bad for your machine and probably not great for your strings because of the, the bend um, with which you'll be pulling string in that case. So that's why I don't use the brake. It's not horrible to do, but like as a best practice, if you can avoid using the brake, it's probably better from what, I, from what I've understood. Um, so, I can still pull this main here, because I still have one grommet hole before I go completely to O port. But, after this, I've got the next 10 mains full O port. That's not true, because this one is... This one I 
there's um, still a grommet here on the side. So let's see. Let's see what the angle looks like in just a second. Make sure none of these strings are overlapping, although I guess it'd be too late if they were because I should have checked them sooner, frankly. Okay. So now we are into the O port on this side. We weave it through. Go to the O port here, lower half. Yeah, we can still pull this one, because we're still in a grommet, but then, now, <laughs> the next 10 or so mains will be um, fully O-port. Okay, so this is where it gets a little different, because if I were to go to pull this main here, and you'll see this in just a second, um, it would pull, um, it would pull diagonally like that and so this little gap right here I don't know if you can see that this little this little gap right here needs to be fixed so that the string stays properly spaced and doesn't just collapse against the other one right here and I'll show you how to do that in just a sec but first I'm going to string ahead just down the next O port or the top of the next O port okay and then this is where you just drop in the, um, you can actually un undo this one. This is where you drop in the clothespin right here. Because this is where the string would collapse. If you open that up and you put the clothespin in, now when I pull, it's almost perfectly the perfect distance between my um, crosses. So I can pull without needing the break. And you'll see that this distance stays about half an inch or so. And then I can come in and clamp, take this out, and you can see that this distance is, is about perfect. It's not as good as a, a direct grommet, but it's better than needing to use the brake. And I didn't used to do this. I used to use the brake five or 10 years ago, but um, since I got my Tension, my latest wise tension head, which is what I'm using here. I've been doing this just to protect, mostly to protect my machine, actually. So again, just put the clothespin on the main, the last main, to keep the distance on the crosses. And uh, it keeps a nice distance between, between your crosses. And it makes stringing the O-ports much easier since the clothespin has about the same width as the port itself. Pretty nice. Hard to find those clothespins locally though. I think I had to order mine. I couldn't find them at any local stores. I guess I didn't probably look that hard. But So we got that. And where are we going? Here. And you only have to do this, you know, five, five, ten times. Because um, there's only so many mains that go through, go through O ports on both sides of the frame. So those are the only ones where you need to do this. If there's a grommet on the uh, second half of the frame, the string will automatically be pulled straight. So I forgot this racket's pretty easy to string. A couple little, little gotchas, but. Overall, pretty straightforward. Come on. There we go. We've got about five more minutes left. Let's see if we can power through. <clears throat> I mean, the rest is straightforward. We're going to be tying off down here. Um, but there's nothing else fancy at all about the string pattern. The, the most interesting parts have already been completed. So we have three more of these annoying crosses. Four more, something like that. Maybe four more. The other thing is when you get to the bottom half of the racket, <clears throat> sometimes you don't need the uh, 
sometimes you don't need the clothespin anymore because, and I'll straighten these mains out at the end, but sometimes you don't need the clothespin anymore because the way that the uh, tension is pulled, the racket stays balanced in the right direction, um, which I think we'll see here in just a minute actually. Should be coming to the end of this as we only have to do usually like the top half of the O-ports with the clothespin. So let's see. I think this might be it. So now here, yeah, right here when I pull, nope, not quite, next one. Um, on the next cross after this one, it will, uh, it will be balanced in the right direction so it will not need the close to close. We'll see. nice and straight right across without without needing the uh, clothespin anymore. So I can go back to clamping like normal for these last couple O-port holes. And the rest is a uh, breeze. We've got about two and a half minutes left in the video. Let's see if I can finish in time. It's always cutting it close with 30 minutes for me. I, I don't string particularly quick. But I still have four mains or so, so it's probably have to cut early. Focus. Okay, we're completely done with O ports on this side. Last O port on this side. Okay. And um, yeah, I mean, I think as I get ready to cut off the video here again, the most important thing to note is we'll we'll be uh, stringing two more mains and then tying off right here at the second grommet on the left. It's labeled as a tie off right here, so you can figure it out really easily since it's it's labeled. But it's after the power rings, it's the second grommet um, on one side of the racket specifically. Yeah. Shoot. Two, two more mains, yeah. So I'm gonna cut the uh, recording here rather than have it cut off on me. I'm gonna string two more mains and then come up and tie off right here again using a Parnell knot. And I'm gonna straighten out the string bed because they're a little crooked as I've tweaked them with stringing with uh, the clothespin. But hopefully this was helpful. XO3 Toron, Ruben Gonzalez. They're no longer called the Ruben Gonzalez, but Pretty easy frame, especially if you have the clothespin. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.